what it was invented in Pennsylvania is the whole idea of being able to reuse this water. And that has a significant implication on natural gas industry anywhere else in the world. You know, anybody who's going to be doing hydraulic fracturing is going to look at us and say, well, these guys in Pennsylvania are recycling the water, therefore it's doable and they're making economics with it, we, even with the low gas prices. Why don't we do the same thing? Well, we wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't profitable. That's the whole idea of being in business. But we're also um, environmental stewards and, and a model for the DEP and EPA. They've all, they've all been here. And that's the whole purpose of our treatment facility, is to recycle every bit of water that comes out of the ground and put it back into the ground. And clean it up and put it back. This model has been so almost the standard in the industry, we'll say. And, um, was this created by you? This was my idea, yes, concept, whatever, to, uh, to get a total recycle package together. My name is Andrew Kosinski. I am a president and CEO of um, Reserved Environmental Services. I've got about 30 years of uh, wastewater experience, mostly in the industrial phases. Been in um, the frack water business since its conception helped uh, Range do its uh, first hole, its first drilling uh, well, uh, and provided uh, water treatment for them at that time. That was back in 2006, I believe, or 2007. And when did you build this operation here? Uh, this inf uh, this is, took two years in the making, to, or 18 months in the making, just to get it on, uh, get, get it ready for treating. Uh, and we started processing water here in April of 2010. We have 15 to 20 producers under contract that use this facility. And Residual waste just sounds pretty non-toxic. It's still the brown stuff that you receive. It's, there's still all kinds of chemicals in it. Yeah, but, but none of it is really toxic. You know, to be honest with you, nothing really is toxic in it. There, there's nothing. I mean, it would kill fish, don't get me wrong, but the metals wouldn't kill the fish. The salt would kill the fish first because they can't tolerate the salt. Uh, basically what happens is the first step is a truck comes in and um, what we do is we take down the uh, its information, what company it's hauling for, the number, the license plate. At this station, this is, this is the clear point or the, the testing point to qualify a load, a truck to unload. Once they pass all these tests, then we send them down to unload. And what is, what gets tested here? Uh, pH, total dissolved solids, suspended solids, and flammability. If you open up the truck and you catch a whiff of gas, there's usually drip gas. Sometimes the smell just leaches into the water. Um, but if it's drip gas, this is what happens. It'll light. How often do you find this? Um, not very often. Last mean? year was pretty bad. What does it mean, pretty bad? How often? Um, maybe one a day. After the trucks are released from the receiving area, they pull around to these unloading boxes. Uh, these are nicknamed rock boxes because that's exactly what they do. They take the rock, the sand, and all the heavy particles, the grit, out of the water before it comes into the main treatment process. So the trucks back up to these. They are 
technically called rectangular clarifiers. They are in series. And then there's pumps in the final tanks uh, uh, in the back. And this green pipe behind me pumps the water up into the flash mix tank. This flash mix tank uh, starts the beginning of the treatment. And that is, here we add sodium hydroxide for pH adjustment, sodium sulfate for barium removal, chlorine for bacteria kill. And they're all mixed here in this flash mix tank and then dividedly, divided equally into these two tanks. These tanks are called equalization tanks, appropriately called, because what they do is they blend all the flow together and make it even so the plant inside can run as a steady state, as it's called. And this brownish, reddish color is actually a high degree of iron and mud and uh, other suspended solids that comes in from the field and it begins the process by pumping it inside once it gets into this tank. Is that not radioactive? This, uh, this water is not radioactive. Radioactivity does not come into play until we start taking all the solids out in the sludge. And then there's some radio measurable radioactivity. There's no measurable radioactivity in here. with these pumps down here. They're variable speed uh, drive pumps. This plant is one of the largest ones in Pennsylvania and we treat uh, water at 500 to 600 gallons a minute. And the water is pumped from the equalization tank through this green pipe to these flash mix tanks that are over there. There's three in a row and what they do is they uh, are, have various chemicals that are added and they precipitate the metals out, we take iron out, we take barium out, we take strontium out, and then the final tank is uh, the polymer, this tank down here, it's like a uh, gummy fluid polymer, it's pumped to the last tank, and makes all of the particles come together, it's called flocculation, and that is the last process before we go to the outside. What we're coming to here now is the clarifiers, and this is the main process this is one of the this is the main separation step for the separating the dirty water from the clean water as you can see in the trough the water is coming in with all the chemistry in it and all the precipitation metals and you can see the nice green water being developed in the clarifiers green water basically is the water that's going to uh, the field and it is uh, nothing in it but salt it's on that's 10, 000, it's 100,000 milligrams per liter of dissolved solids in it. Principally sodium chloride and calcium chloride. And then this water still goes through further processing uh, through an anthracite coal filter. What we have here is after it comes out of the clarifiers where we would, we have a filtration tank. What he's doing is he's skimming off uh, these black uh, modules or goblets and these goblets believe it or not are actually crude oil Now you don't see it until this point because uh, it only comes in maybe one or two milligrams per liter well we, this plant is the largest one in Pennsylvania we average uh, 400,000 gallons a day uh, give or take and the amount of trucks needed to do that is on the order of um, 50 to 60, sometimes uh, up to 100 uh, barrel or 100 trucks a day. And, and we have both incoming trucks for the disposal 
and then we have trucks coming in for disposal and recycle, and then we have trucks coming in. This uh, we also sell fresh water, so they'll they'll take makeup water also. It doesn't. <laughs> the on-site treatment, as it's called, is actually a, um, a competitor to this central waste treatment facility. That's what this is called, a central waste treatment facility. This requires trucking, and uh, but it, uh, many times, it, again, I, I indicated earlier, if we're within a 60-mile radius and they want a truck, we're very competitive and very easy and we assure good water quality that's that's the main thing water quality if they started using the acid mine drainage water could you recycle it here well acid mine drainage is prevalent throughout pennsylvania it's well known and could it be used as a water source to do fracking with? Yes, it can, absolutely. Would it impact the flowback water that we, could, that we would have to treat here and recycle? Uh, I don't think so. We, it would not be a, uh, an impossible task to, once the AMD acid mine drainage is blended with the frac water, I don't even think you'd be able to tell it was there. Uh, it would easily be recycled and sent back to the field. It's the initial treatment of the AMD before use is where there's a, a monumental task in doing that, removing all the contaminants from the AMD. And that wouldn't happen here? That would not happen here. That would have to happen somewhere else. We would take it after it's fracked. Could it happen here? I could set up a facility to make mine drainage use that like that, but mostly you would treat it right at the point source. Water that you hear about going to deep well injection systems in Ohio is water similar to this, but it's unnecessary to really take it there. You could bring it here, and we we clean it up and use it, reuse it. These are the pressure filters that do the final polishing of the water. It's pumped from that tank through these coal filters, coal filters, and then it pumped through this blue line that you see it going here and then out into our recycle bin, recycle tank. What are your biggest concerns and hopes regarding shale gas drilling? Well, the biggest concern in shale gas, from just an economic standpoint, is to develop the market for the gas. My ideal, as an, as an American, would be to have the gas replace the oil and free us from foreign oil. Um, the only concern is that you need to have good surface management of the waters. In other words, when the water comes out of the ground from 8,000 feet down, it needs to be handled properly at the surface because at the surface is where the contamination develops, not when you're fracking. This is actually uh, our uh, end product. As you can see, it's very, very clear. The only uh, thing it has in it is uh, the dissolved salts. Uh, the, the producers do want it this clear because uh, any, any uh, suspended solids that go down the well uh, impedes uh, fracking, uh, the uh, fracking process. So uh, we, are, we produce water with less than 5 milligrams per liter suspended solids. You wouldn't drink it? No, you can't drink it because it just makes you throw up. Because if you ever wanted to empty anything out of your stomach, you take salt water. It's an old uh, wives tail uh, treatment of treating kids with a bad stomach or any other person with a bad stomach. So if you want to throw up, drink it because it's very, very salty, 10 to 12% salt.